everyone and welcome to my new vlog love is the message a journey of a dj i am fly lady Di, also known as diana reyes that's my government name um so i am starting this vlog for many many reasons one of them being um that i want to get better as a dj and a friend of mine in new york uh suggested that i document my journey which i thought was a really good idea i've been thinking about vlogging for a minute um, my baby sis started a vlog and was like, you know what, I think I'm going to start a vlog. Shout out to Toyang Marie, Victoria. Uh, so here I am uh, in my lovely, lovely home here in Toronto, Canada. Um, I'll actually give you a little quick tour of my house. Well, it's just like this room is where I get a lot of stuff done. Um, this is actually my DJ collection that my cousin gave me. I'm going to see him actually later on today. Uh, as you can see, there's many records. Uh, and there's my little foam roller because I'm a dancer. So I need to foam roll myself sometimes. And this is my little cassette collection um, that I actually grew up listening to. A lot of these classics. Joe to say, Mary J. Blige. Those were like, you know, like obviously Janet. Uh, my mentors, like musically. And then... Uh, my books and then some messy stuff sorry um not really prepared to show you but uh yeah so this is my house it's really really big and spacious um and this is actually where i practice dancing too because i'm a professional dancer um so anyways so a little bit about me if you don't know me already or if you do but you don't know about my dj journey uh i started djing four years ago actually right here in this apartment in this very corner, not kidding, uh, one of my best friends, Jojo Dancer Zelina, uh, was throwing me a birthday party at my house or helping throw, the, my, <laughs> helping throw my party. And he was DJing and with his uh, laptop on the DJ app. And he said to me, uh, I have to go pee, can you take over? And I said, uh, I don't know how to do this. So he showed me, he's like, okay, you press one song and then you play another song. I was like, okay, I can figure it out. Figured it out in five minutes started playing, everyone was like, looking at me like, yeah, woo! So I was like, okay, I think I like DJing, you know, because like, I personally have always been a music lover. As a dancer, I've known uh, lots of different types of music and loved different types of music. Um, I'm, before I'm a dancer, I'm a music lover though, uh, I have to say. And I dance because I love music. So anyway, getting that out of the way. Um, so I started playing and it, was, it went well, people loved it, and that was my first time DJing. This was my birthday party, my epic birthday party here in this house, 2013. I turned 20, 31, yeah, do the math. Uh, okay, so then fast forward to maybe a month later, uh, we had a party at Cold Tea called The Vortex, uh, featuring myself, Jojo, and his cousin MC Illa Brown, shout outs to MC Illa Brown. And uh, same thing happened. Jojo was like, I have to go to the bathroom. And I said to myself, okay, let me take over. Whatever he has on his, uh, his you know, iTunes I can play. So I started playing and literally 10 minutes later, the, the dance floor was like packed and people were sweating and people were like yelling at every song choice that I made. People come, came up to me with like requests for my business card. And I was like, you know what? I literally just started doing this like this minute. <laughs> I just learned how to do this. And so um, I had an ex-boyfriend at the time who had me play his uh, comedy shows. And then I started getting booked to do a lot of other cool gigs. And you know what? I started um, DJing on my iPhone and my iPad. And this was very much frowned upon, obviously, by like, you know, like hardcore DJs who are very much about vinyl which totally is granted. I think if I came up um, learning how to DJ the right way, you know, through vinyl, which is the foundation of DJing, um, and I saw someone, you know, come up with their iPhone or iPad, I'd be like, what the hell is she doing? Nonetheless, I have been known to pack it in and play a crazy night or two or three or many, uh, especially at Cold Tea, which is where we got our start. Uh, thank you to Oliver and Matthew and Stacy for providing such an amazing venue to start DJing at. And I still play there to this day. Uh, another reason why I am starting this blog, vlog is because 
I had a couple bum nights of DJing, and this really set me back uh, egotistically, really badly. So what, what had happened was, uh, I had played a night with a friend of mine from LA, um, and you know, if anyone knows Toronto, it's cold tea, Kensington Market, uh, the barbecue on Sunday night is just like, just insane. It's just crowded, people line up for days. Uh, trying to get in and it's really competitive to try to get in there and I was thinking it was the end of summer or it was like midsummer one of the last you know Sundays in in uh, August and people are just gonna come automatically and they're gonna stay and then we're gonna have a great time so <laughs> I ended up playing the transition which is inside because the barbecue happens outside so I played inside you know trying to get people to grasp on to whatever I'm playing, which has, for me, always been my way. Like, I've had nights where I've played the transition and hooked people in and kept kept the venue packed the entire night from, from the transition into the night. Um, and it just was not happening this time. And I was, I kept thinking like, oh, is it me? Maybe, you know, people are just tired or drunk from the barbecue. Maybe they'll, they'll all come in at 12 o'clock as they sometimes would on Sunday night. Um, but, you know, people started leaving and, you know, people would come and look how empty it was and then leave. And so to me, this is like my worst nightmare because I love playing at cold tea and I always pride myself with like being able to rock a cold tea crowd and it just was not happening this time. Um, so that kind of like laid it into me that I needed to step it up. I need to update my <laughs> iTunes, uh, playlists and just get with the times because you know playing only what I like and what I know is not always going to work for me I have to actually do my homework so this is me doing my homework not only researching music but um, actually figuring out the skill of DJing and uh, working on the craft of DJing so all of you uh, you know hardcore DJs out there will be proud to know that this this vlog is about someone actually learning the skill of DJing and not relying on technology to uh, and I'm, I'm not someone who just like sits there and plays a mix. I mean people do it, but I like to actually play. So anyways, not judging anyone. Uh, okay, so what else? I would like to thank my mentors, um, first of all who inspired me to become a DJ. Um, if I was to become any kind of DJ, I would want to be like them. Uh, the first person that comes to mind is DJ Spinna. Um, he's played many a times where, you know, it was like a 12 hour set, which is insane. And had, you know, people just moving and shaking the entire night. Um, I remember this one time, it was, he plays his birthday every every year. It's a barbecue in Brooklyn. And I'm not sure if it still happens, but, uh, I was just like flabbergasted at how he played songs that I knew for my whole life. But the way he played them, I heard them in a different way. It was weird. And thus I enjoyed them in a different way. Um, and then also Babita Garcia, who I grew up reading about or reading articles of in Vibe magazine, which I would pour over as a child, um, literally reading f like cover to cover. He had this little sec segment where he would play songs that people might not be familiar with from the past and see how people react to it. Um, and I read, a, I read this since I was 13. I was just obsessed with Vibe Magazine ever since. And, um, you know, when I moved to New York in the kind of mid 2000s, we became friends. Uh, he recognized me as a dancer who would throw down in, in Central Park and uh, different places in New York City. And yeah, like by sheer luck, we became homies. And you know, when I started DJing, I asked him for advice, and he gave me a lot of advice. And you know, he said that there are there are different kinds of DJs, and I I know this for myself too. And this journey as a DJ is also for me to figure out what kind of DJ I am and what kind of DJ I want to be. Um, I'm an artist. I'm also a painter. I'm also a dancer. So the way I'm I want to approach DJing is is just that is being an artist and I don't want to there came a point where I just started playing music and just was like playing music and not being artful about it and 
I feel the need now to express myself through DJing and actually make it an art. Uh, so yeah, so, and the friend that recommended that I uh, document this process is Rich Nice. Look him up, he's an important person in music history. Okay, so what do I hope to accomplish with this vlog? Many things, I hope to get better. I hope to show you that I'm getting better. So this is a way of holding myself accountable for learning these, these new skills. Um, and it's gonna be something that I do consistently, which would, would also help. And this is something that um, I'll be able to apply my time and resources towards. Um, I will shoot it every Friday and possibly upload it every Monday. So you'll have some entertainment on Monday. Mm -mm -mm. That's when I like to watch my shows. Uh, okay, so that's what I hope to accomplish is to get better, basically. Um, possibly reach uh, fellow DJs and get a you know conversation going. Because there's a lot of issues that I feel like I have personally um, in terms of what I encounter as a DJ that are kind of like, you know, like I want to sort of ask other DJs if they feel the same way. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, my goals as a DJ. So... I think it was Oshinare who played, it was like 2006 or so, it was PS1 MoMA. And there was a clip of this guy that I used to be obsessed with and him dancing to this very critical moment in that, I guess, set. I, was, I wasn't there to experience it, but I saw this clip of it online and said to myself, like, damn, like, that would be amazing if I could play PS1 MoMA or like just to be able to play at like a crazy venue where there's art and arts, artsy people and like fly people and like, you know, just a, a scene where people are e just in, encompassed with everywhere. And, you know, like I, as an artist, that's kind of where I want to see myself. I want to, I want to be around like big, huge bodies of art, important works of art. Uh, and kind of creating this experience for people. That's what I really want. Uh, okay, so what can you expect from this very cool vlog that you just started watching? There's a lot of things. I'm going to put it together in segments. The first segment will be showing you what I worked on in the past week. So you'll get to see my skills that I worked on. Uh, thank you for uh, everything. DJ C-Note is my first teacher, and I want to acknowledge you also known as Julius in our family. He's the one who made fun of me from being fat. And now look where we are. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you. Ooh, that's my Facebook. I should turn that off. So thank you, DJ Sino. You're the best cousin ever. Besides making fun of me when I was a kid for being fat. Um, okay, and uh, so what I worked on. That's number one segment. Number two segment is getting my full suite. So I'm talking about um, acquiring two Technique turntables, a mixer, two monitors, and that's it. I actually just acquired a Serato box, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that's kind of like step one. Serato box. I'm getting needles soon, and I'll show you those in a sec. Uh, okay, the third segment will be DJ dilemmas. So my dilemma right now, which I'll break down, is you know, being someone from a different generation um, than these millennials, <laughs> uh, I'm from a generation where we absorb music in a totally different way. It was very much like what we saw on TV, what we heard on the radio, what we heard in a party, and it was very consistent. Uh, so our streams of receiving music were all very similar. Nowadays, people have Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, which is like the biggest thing on the planet right now for music. So there's all these different avenues, you know, uh, that people are receiving music from. And uh, I'm not used to things moving so quickly. And maybe I'm not around enough young people to know like where they're getting their music from. But Truthfully, I was a little flabbergasted because there's so much out there, but uh, I kind of figured it out. I am I belong to a DJ pool, a couple of them, so that actually helps me keep up to date, and I'm also just, I stay up on YouTube and SoundCloud and all that now, and Spotify. Um, so yeah, I'm getting there. But my question to you now is, 
do you, as a DJ, conform to the times? Mm-hmm. Sorry, that was my text. Or do you stay in your certain lane? Are you a particular type of DJ? Do people expect a certain sound from you? And do you deliver that sound every time? That's my question to you. For me, at this moment in time, I love pleasing people. I love connecting to all walks of life through music. And so that has kind of motivated me to learn more and kind of acquire different different tastes in music, like pop. I am kind of like a child of the underground and anyone who knows me knows like me as like a house dancer, which is like very not the mainstream at all. But I've come to actually like pop music. Some of it is pretty fun to listen to. And I also have two very young nephews, so it's kind of easy for me to receive pop in a way that's enjoyable now. So anyways, that's enough about that. Okay. Oh, the fourth segment that I will be uh, working on is called Chun, which is a term, if you grew up in Toronto, know that if they if the DJ plays your song, you yell you yell out tune or like big tune. It's basically a tune but with like a Jamaican patois accent. So yeah, tune. Uh, I will actually relay my two favorite tunes of the week, one new and one old, an oldie but a goodie. Uh, my tune this week for new is Shade by IMDDB it for you right now. Here it is. It's called Shade. pick is for the oldie but a goodie you heard it earlier uh where is it it and then um oh yeah so it'll be my darndest to introduce you to my one minute mix which i will upload on instagram my instagram is at fly lady die f-l-y-l-a-d-y-d-i follow me i'm almost at five thousand followers uh, uh, uh. anyways thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed my first episode and Subscribe. I never said that before, but subscribe if you like this. Uh, probably like, why is she wearing a bra? It's because it's September, and for some reason it's like 29, 30 degrees in Toronto. It's hot. All right. Um, peace and love. And uh, if you have anything to say, write me in the comments. Um, and yeah, get at me. Get at me, dog. Yeah, I'm right here, dog. Where my dogs at? We right here, dog. Where my dogs at? 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 Where my dog